remember Walker Nation by they truly cared about the athlete. It's not an ego thing. We're not doing this to be billionaires, millionaires, anything like that. We're doing it to make sure the athlete is prepared for the real world. We're doing it to make sure others don't turn out how we turned out and be lost in that empty space of feeling lonely and just not a part of the world. We're here because we truly care for them. At the end of the day, it's really not about money. If we change one person's life, we did. And that's what helps us wake up every single day, knowing we can help motivate someone to be a better version of themselves. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as always, you all know, the purpose of this podcast is to focus on stories, strategies, and successes, ultimately to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And today I'm, I'm excited to have, have these two gentlemen in the building. Man, we have the walk on nation in the building. We got, we got Mr. Mike, we got Mr. Michael Willette, and we have Mr. Tristan. Reeves, man, what what's going on, fellas? How how we doing today? How we doing? We doing, man. That's another day, living the dream. Hey, we blessed, man. We appreciate being on here. Man, definitely, definitely. I seen y'all been out here in these streets, man. Mike, like I said before, <laughs> offline, I said you you were one of the first people I connected with just just in this space, and you know I got the opportunity to chat with you and hear a little bit about. Uh, about what what you were doing and you know what you all have accomplished, man. So for for the people out there who aren't familiar with with Walk On Nation, go go ahead and go ahead and just introduce the people, or for those who do you know, reintroduce the people to Walk On Nation, if you will. I got you, man. Walk On Nation. We're all about athletic identity redefined. We're all about athlete is enhanced, not defined by their status. Plenty of guys play their sport, guys and girls. After the sports over, they have no idea who they are. So their identity is athletics. So we're here to change that narrative. We're here to put you as a person first. So you know who you are separate from an athlete. So when it is over, you can transition to the real world seamlessly instead of having that gap of, man, who am I? I have no idea what I'm going to do outside of my sport. Hmm. But what makes sure we dive into that when we talk about athletic identity, we talk about core values, we're talking about building your own brand. Walk On Nation is made to help the athlete be a complete person outside of being a complete athlete. That's what our focus is at Walk On Nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tristan, you got anything you want to touch on that, man? Uh, I think Mike did a really good job of uh, summing all that up. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Man, definitely, definitely. Tristan, when, when did y'all decide that that this was necessary for, for you two to put your heads together and, and and bring this thing to life, man? Why why is this necessary? And when did y'all decide to pull the pull the not pull the plug, but pull the trigger? Uh, I think it was a mutual buildup, really, um, over our careers as student athletes at UCF. Um, both of us starting as walk-ons and earning our scholarship. Both of us dealing with season and career ending injuries just just seeing how year by year our brothers on our team and just student athletes in general coming into college and leaving college kind of being in the same space uh mentally and professionally um and just seeing a problem seeing a void like how can we how can we fix this you know and um how it happened was me and Mike both had an opportunity to be an intern with the Student Athlete Welfare and Development Office at UCF, which was a great opportunity. It was really cool. So we were able to help out with, create, and put on different um, facilitations, different programs for these student athletes. And um, we were able to kind of pick and choose what we thought worked, what we didn't think worked, what we liked, what we didn't like, and seeing what was receptive of the student athletes. And one day Mike just came to me and was like, you know, we can we can really make an impact doing this. We're really good at this. And we like, why don't we just do this? Mm. And it was, for me, it was a no brainer. I'm like, hell yeah, let's do this. Like, let's go. And then from there, we just started plugging away, building up different curriculums, trying it with our own teammates, 
at a local high school mm-hmm. and just kind of building it up, repetition, repetition, and then we just we just did it. This was about what what Mike 20, 2016, 2017, 2015, 2017. We started building it. And then um, 2019, January 1st, we we launched it. So uh, we just we're just starting now our, our third year of business. Man, dope, dope. Man, I love that because y'all y'all said that y'all were y'all were already in the space. Y'all realized what you were doing. You after 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 the injuries, and you realized that what you were doing, you can go out and go out and do your own. So how 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 essential has it been for for each of you have having the other one j- just in this industry, like having having a teammate and having a partner? Talk about how that's boiled over from you all being on the field to now the work that you're doing. I would say it's not too different from the field to here. It's very important and it's very essential to have my partner, Tristan, in this with me because he keeps me level-headed. So in case I'm stressed out in this situation, I feel like it's too much, I can handle it. I got someone to lean on. Also, I got someone to bounce ideas off. We can bounce ideas off each other. So it's not just me saying, oh, this will work. If it's stupid, Tristan will tell me it's stupid. (laughs) If it work, I got someone to put my trust, my faith in Tristan, that he'll be honest with me 100% and tell me if this will work and if it won't. And the same vice versa from my end is we are each other's backbone in a sense when it comes to this. Nice. Yeah, ab- absolutely. With that, um, I think what really helped too is we were teammates first. Hmm. And then we became friends and then we became best friends. Then we became brothers. Like there was a progression too. It's not like one day we're like, oh, let's do business together and go into it. Uh, another thing uh, that makes this such a great partnership is there's no ego involved. Mm. Um, like we both are feel like we're very capable young men. We're both very competitive, both very um, excited and motivated to take care of our families. But we, we know we're better together than apart. So we do a very good job, in my opinion, of leaving the ego at the door or wherever we're at and getting to work together. Has that has that always been the case with, with the ego? Has that always been the case to where you, you all didn't, there, there, there was no ego? Or, you know, was there a point where you're like, hold on, Mike? Chill out, Tristan. <laughs> I would say it's, in a sense, in our nature. So that walk-on nation, the walk-on mentality that we talk about, being a walk-on, I got embedded in my nature. I can't have an ego because if I have an ego, I'm right off the team and I'm kicked off. So having embedded into me years going into college and playing and earning my scholarship, that ego of being that guy almost isn't there because I can't have that because if I – show that coach can take that the wrong way and kick me off the team and I lose my spot. I lose everything I worked for. So having that ego as a walk on, it doesn't exist. Walk on and ego are two words that don't go together. Mm. If you do, there are no walk on. So being that, that walk on mentality that's still in both me and Tristan just carries over in the work. We already know how it goes when it comes to that. Yeah, man. So if there's somebody out there now who's either a walk on or there's somebody out there who is in the transfer portal, right? Because we know that, that that's been something. I mean, I know that wasn't a thing for y'all. That wasn't a thing for me, you know, the whole transfer portal. But thinking thinking about that that individual right now, like what, what would you tell that individual if they're in between teams or if, if there's someone who, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it there. If, if there's somebody in between teams right now, right? And, and, and y'all, y'all are walk-on nation, you know, talking about the walk-on mentality. Like, what word of advice would you give to that individual? Uh, I would say, I would say, check your motive first and foremost. What are you, what are you doing this for? Are you transferring to another school because you don't like your coach, because this school doesn't have your major, because like whatever reason it is, is it is it for selfish purposes or is it a, a decision that's going to put you and your family in a better position in the long run? Um, cause in my opinion, I think a lot of student athletes, they just like to bounce around now cause it's, it's trendy. It's cool. Obviously not everyone falls in that category. There's different mm-hmm. reasons why coaching changes, injuries, you know, whatever. Um, but I would say check the motive and make sure your decision is not just rooted in the sport, but it's multifaceted. Yeah, that, that's, that's real. That's real. So man, I got, I, so I got to ask y'all since 
you all been in this space since, since 2016 and and I know the curriculum has grown over time. I know the ideas and the concepts has grown over time, but you all also have seen just this space of student athlete development, student athlete empowerment. You all have seen some people come and you all have seen some people go. So now, now as you know, you, you are doing this work, you have been in this work for, for some time now. What are your thoughts when you all see, you, you know, when, when, like when you see so many more people trying to come into the space and they're like, oh man, yeah, y'all get to talk to student athletes and they see you on campus and you know, y'all are living, y'all are living a, like the career is sexy, right? Because you all are having opportunity, all these opportunities. What do you say, man, to, to those people or, or well, not necessarily to those people, as you see all these people coming into the industry, as you see the people coming into the space, I want to know what's going on over there in y'all's head with, with Walk On Nation, with y'all being, you know, the, the people that, that been in it and, you know, been doing it. I'll say what Tristan said earlier, check your motive. Are mm. you doing Because it? it's sexy and it's cool and it's real trendy to be part of sports right now, or are you doing it to better the student athlete? Because one thing, all athletes know we can read fakeness. If you're just here to just try to make money and it's trendy, we read right through you. And that's why you're here today going tomorrow. That's why for us, we've been there. We've done that. We resonate with the players. You play basketball. You know, if you talk with somebody and they don't resonate with the sport, you zone out just like that. I ain't saying you know. You ain't never been here. You ain't been in the trenches. You don't know what workouts are like. You don't know what lifting is like. But you're here because you, it looks cool. You've seen some things on social media, you read some books, you did this, you did that, but you haven't been in the space. You haven't been in the locker room. You you and I haven't done the same things. Like not trying to put myself in that part, but to a certain degree, to truly understand someone, you have to be in your shoes, especially in this space. It's not the lights and camera. This this is the business world. If you haven't been in that business and understand it, what coaches like politics is like workouts training, eating, studying, scheduling, all that. So you don't understand that fully. It's really hard to resonate. And you're just not authentic. That's for us. I'm like, if you've been there and you've done that, it's different. But if you just want to do it just to do it because it looks cool, you're in for a surprise. Yeah. And and to piggyback off of that, on the, on the positive side of that, um, the ones that are in it, uh, authentically, the ones are that are in it to make a true difference in student athletes, I think is great because for a long, long time, even before us, student athletes didn't have advocates. Mm. Uh, so the fact that more former student athletes, more administrators who truly want to help student athletes are stepping up and creating their podcasts or programs or businesses, I think that's such a great thing. Um, like recently, it's like mental health has been a big thing. Um, that we're focusing on the student athletes. I think it's such a great thing because there's so many student athletes that they transition out of their sport and they're into the real world and they have issues. Yeah. And not not to sound funny or anything, but like there's a lot of people who are former athletes that have a lot of issues that they didn't even realize because nothing was there. Were, no one ever helped them walk through it. There's nothing. There was nothing there for them to deal with it. Um, but now I feel like there are more and more programs available to them. I think it's, it's, it's a great thing. Yeah, yeah, man. So what's so with all the work that you all do, what would you all say are some of the some of the biggest challenges? If y'all if y'all put it in in a space, what would you say are the top three challenges that that you see most often, or are the top three things that that student athletes typically ask you all about, um, just just in the work that you all are doing? I would say one is how do they separate the field from real life? Because they're taught their whole life, your sport, your sport, your sport, your sport. Like we ask the question to, in our programs with athletes, who are you? Outside of an athlete, who are you as a person? And for most of them, none of them have never been asked that question before in their life. So trying to separate that from, I'm only an athlete to wait. I'm actually a person that play sports that mm. step, that part is a number one challenge that we always see athletes face we dive through it but that's one challenge athletes face i'll let tristan say another one thank you uh another another one as mike talked about identity is um and it, it ties into it but it's a little bit different is their values um 
we're taught that my value as a football player is indicative of how many touchdowns, how many yards, how many wins we get as a team. Um, and we can speak from firsthand experience. We played at UCF one year, we were zero and 12. We were the lacking, laughing stock of the campus of Orlando of the country as far as football goes. Um, but it's confusing because it's those same people that counted us out that were laughing at us that were calling us national champions when we were 13 and 0. So it's confusing because like that could be the girl you like, that could be your parents, that could be your professor who's grading your grades or grading your, your assignments. Um, yet last year you you didn't even know my name, you didn't want to talk to me, you want to be my friend, but now you want to be all in my in my life and support me and stuff. It's hard to decipher what's real and what's not because the how we're treated sometimes unfortunately and the value that we perceive from other people is directly correlated to athletic performance rather than academic success or how we are as actual humans like morality mm -hmm. yeah and on top of that to allude tristan alluded to the earlier is the third thing is mental health athletes don't really understand mental health until we talk to them about it we're so used to shrugging it off and shaking it off to the it gets to the point where we break down and where we could have prevented it, but we had no idea what we were doing. We put so much pressure on ourselves to be perfect that that's a problem. We don't talk about that mental health. So when we talk about mental health, most athletes say, man, that ain't me. I'm fine. I'm cool. Until we break it down little by little, then at least, oh, man, mm -hmm. I'm struggling like this. I had no idea until someone put it in my face saying, this is the problem you're going through. You don't realize it until you break down. And we're stopping that part right here. We're the middleman and interfering in that part. So I'll say the third part of that athletes struggle to deal with is the mental for sure. Man, yeah, yeah. I think I think y'all really hit the nail on the head, but Tristan, man, you threw me off when you said 0 and 12. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh God, <laughs> let's Tristan! Talk about it, man, What's up? man, let let man let let's talk about it. Just, just talk to me because you, how how is it possible for a team to go zero and twelve, and then a team to talk, and then a team to go thirteen? Okay, so first off, talk to me about what like what what did the culture of the locker room look like when you are were zero and twelve? Talk to me about the culture, man. Well, that's the answer to the next question. What's the difference in zero and twelve, thirteen? No, it's it's culture because that was. Pretty much the same exact team, same exact players, different coaching staff, different attitude towards the program, different culture instilled. But on that year, 0-12, the culture was it, was, it was rough, man. We had players fighting players, players fighting coaches, coaches fighting each other, not like fist fights, just like no one was on the same accord. Everyone mm -hmm. was doing their own thing. We were all pulling the rope in different directions. No one really wanted to be there, coaches included. And it, we fed off that, you know, it got, it got to a point where we we felt like if we got injured right now, a serious injury, our coaches would not care. They would not help us. They would not be there for us. So in a way we're like, why are we going to continue to bust our butt work as hard as we work day in and day out for people who don't care about our well being? At, forget at like scoring touchdowns and getting the interceptions and stuff our well-being as humans, like we felt like that was not valued. So why are we gonna continue to work hard? Not to say that we were like, okay, we're gonna stop working now. We're gonna lose all our games so they can get out of here. That was not our, our goal, mm -hmm. but it was our, the culture was de decimated. Like there was really none other than I'm gonna take care of myself. Man. Okay, so now talk about just, just cause I know you, I know you really, really bro broke down the 0 and 12. Tristan or Mike, e e either one of y'all, man, e either one of y'all. But talk, talk, talk about what, what, what a thirteen and old championship culture looks like, man. So I would say the biggest change is it went from a me game to a we game. As from zero and twelve, we only cared about us, like man, coaching work myself. But when it came thirteen and zero, we trusted every single person on that team. I knew for sure they. My corner's going to make that play. My quarterback's going to make that play. I have my full trust in you and the coaching staff in this program. The trust and culture was completely different. We all bought in the coach Frost when he came in. We bought into the fact that 
we are truly a brotherhood and let's act like a brotherhood. A brotherhood is not us on a 12 team fighting, yelling, getting mad at the coaches, not caring anymore. We really got to look out for each other. And that stems from on the field and off the field. We made sure we went the right place at the right time. We made sure we weren't getting in trouble, weren't out partying late. We made sure we looked after each other and we had each other's backs. And when that brotherhood truly formed, that's when 13 and 0 came because we truly, truly trusted each other. Man. So what does it feel like to, to be a champion? <laughs> I'll, I'll start with this. It's, it's great. And not just for the reason of being a champion and, you know, winning all your games, but I would say especially for individuals in me and Mike's situation that started as walk-ons and earned our scholarship, like that's one of the few things you cannot question or take ever take away from us. We won every single game. We went from zero and 12 to winning every single game, winning the conference championship. We went from being a walk-on to earning our scholarship. So the naysayers, the media, the people on campus, whoever, they can say whatever they want, do whatever they want, but that record will always be there. And we were a part of that. Mike, what you got? What you got, I would, Mike? I would definitely say everything Tristan said and also an interesting feeling because in that 0 and 12, being called losers to being 13 and 0. And now we're not calling ourselves national champions. You guys are. You put the tag on that we're the champions and we carry that. So we never outright said, oh, we're the national champions. The fan base said it and the tag stuck. And now we're the national champions because, hey, we did it. We live it. And that's what it is now. So it's a very interesting feeling to go out and say, don't you think you're the national champion? I think we should have got a shot, but anybody else called us national champion, so we deserve that title, I guess. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when people think of Walk On Nation and when people think of Tristan and Mike, what do you want people to always remember about, about you all? That's a great question. You haven't done it, asked that before. Um, I just, I, the first thing I thought of was the quote earned, not given. Um, whether it was us going from walk on to scholarship or even us starting from nothing to where we are today with, with our business, All, albeit we still have a long way to go, we, we have a lot more goals to hit. <laughs> we, to get to this point, we've had to earn and scrape and scratch for every inch of it, every second of it, because no one, unfortunately, even on our own campus, no one had our back or supported us to get here. So, I would hope that when they see the brand Walk On Nation, when they think of me and Mike, that we're two individuals that care very much about each other and everybody else, and we work very hard for what we have. And we're proud of that. Yeah, and to piggyback on what Tristan said, I would say, remember Walk On Nation by they truly cared about the athlete. It's not an ego thing. We're not doing this to be billionaires, millionaires, anything like that. We're doing it to make sure the athlete is prepared for the real world. We're doing it to make sure others don't turn out how we turned out and be lost in that empty space of feeling lonely and just not a part of the world. We're here because we truly care for that. At the end of the day, it's really not about money. If we change one person's life, we did. Our and that's what helps us wake up every single day, knowing we can help motivate someone to be a better version of themselves. Absolutely. So now with understanding that NIL, you know, they just pushed it back and you see these agents licking their chops. You see all these brands getting excited. You see all of these people just thinking about the opportunities that they'll have to work with some of these stellar student athletes and just student athletes as a whole, man. What's, what's y'all thoughts about this whole, this whole NIL branding? Is it going to help? Is it going to hurt? I think if done correctly, it can be very helpful. Um, and I'm kind of in between, like, should athletes get paid, should they not get paid? I don't know. But what I do know is the NCAA makes, makes way too much money off of all these student athletes, and student athletes don't see enough of it. So however they can make that work, so it's beneficial to both sides, I think that's, that's good. Well, my fear is that it's going to be – it's not going to be about the sport anymore for the love of the game anymore. It's going to be all about money. Mm. from the student athlete perspective it's already already been that way from 
institution, but um, I'm, I'm afraid also too that it's gonna make the gap between fo football and men's basketball, the big money makers versus the other sports, the gap even wider of mm. how much the players get as far as attention and the payment, coaches, strength staff, trainers, how well they get compensated. Because if the gap gets even wider, they're going to get even more and more discredited and um, undercompensated. So I hope it's done the right way. Following on that, especially we talked about the transfer portal and Tristan said it's less about the game. I feel like on the negative side, it can be more about money now. So I'm transferring to this school because I can be the star now and I can make the money mm -hmm. instead of realizing why you're going to school in the first place. Like at the end of the day, athletes are going to stop eventually. So if you're going just for money in the short term and God forbid you have a career in an injury, then what? You made a jump for the money and you forgot your values and now you're in a situation. But like on the positive side, all the work athletes do, we definitely deserve to be compensated. However, that gets figured out, as Tristan said, but we deserve to be paid for sure. But the right way to do that, they're still under debate. But all the work we do, I think it's a great idea for athletes to get paid. Yeah, man, that's one of those things. It's like, golly, I don't know. Because, I mean, even when they roll it out, right, even whenever that happens, whatever date that is, since they just pushed it back, but of course, you know, they're, they're not gonna get it right the first time. We've seen that with every time they roll out the new iPhone, they don't get it right the first time. They roll it out there and then they make the tweaks and they gotta change it and come back and do this and do that. So, oh man, God. But the, even the thing you said with that, it takes tweaks and stuff with the iPhone, that's quick. Trying to pass law and make some tweaks and stuff, <laughs> with, it might take a while. So you gotta try to get it right the first time which is tough. Right. Man, man. So what's next for Walk On Nation, man? <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Man, big things, man. Big things. We finally transitioned over to the virtual space so we can offer workshops, talk to schools, athletes over on a virtual end. We just got a membership with a company called LR Sports where we have a subscription where you'll have full access to us to our ask us any questions, video podcasts, our worksheets, our workbook, any videos we do, any pre recorded workshops we do, you'll have full access at that website. So that subscription is out now. And Walk On Nation is going to be where we were trending from 2019, then COVID hit. Now we're about to go back to where we belong, where we should be trending back up. People know our name that we don't even know, but word of mouth. From here, from here to here, it's just no. Yeah, uh, the, the, the end goal with all of this, we want to be the voice for student athletes. We want to be the advocate, the representative for the student athletes. So as things continue to transition and change, NIL stuff, other kind of uh, changes that as far as student athlete dynamic goes, we want to be the advocate for them. So through our workshops, through our podcasts, through our campus visits, whatever the case may be. We want a student athletes to know whether it's at a big school, small school, D1, three, JUCO, that they have an ally in Walk On Nation. If they have any questions, they have any issues, they have any, they need guidance, they need whatever, they can come to us and we have that for them. And if we don't have it, we're gonna find it for them. Most definitely, most definitely. So. So if people are out there and they, they, they and they want to just follow you all, they want to connect with you all, where where can they do that at? Just just go ahead and share the information at this time. All our social media is at walk on underscore nation, right, Mike? That's what it is. Yeah, walk on underscore nation. Um our website, www.walkonnation.org. Um, and that's where most of our stuff is gonna be. If you want to follow us personally. Our, our information's on the website and on the uh, business accounts. So we're all there. 
Boom, boom. And and one one thing I want to add, one thing I want to ask you all before before I let y'all run, before I let y'all run, since y'all are a football player, before I let y'all run. But uh <laughs> but um what what would be one tip, one tip that you all would like to leave for a student athlete? And both of y'all, I'm gonna give both of y'all the opportunity to go, but one tip that you would like to leave for a student athlete. I would say define who you are before someone else defines it for you. So understand who you are as a person, your likes, your dislikes, what you want to accomplish in life before a, a coach, a friend, a parent performs it for you. Understand who you are as a person first before you truly dive into this world. Because if not, you'll be shaped in something you don't want to be in you on the back have consequences to deal with that's good um my tip would be perspective try to gain perspective of how all this fits into the big picture um sports are very important to you obviously you're, you're a student athlete you want to be successful in that but that's not the only part of you and that's not the only part of this world outside of sports, outside of college sports, high school, whatever level you're on, there's a big, big world out there in the big scheme of things. I'll, I want you to focus on what's gonna make you and the people around you better people. If that's sports, great. If that's journalism, great. If that's culinary, pursue that and the rest will fall into place. Excellent, excellent. You said that website was walkonnation.org? Dot org, yes, yep walkonnation.org and walk on underscore nation on on all on, just just say it one more time Tristan say it one more time I don't want to mess it up <laughs> yeah walk on underscore nation we're on Instagram we're on Twitter uh, we're on LinkedIn uh, we're on TikTok so okay uh, oh okay yeah, y'all oh, on yeah, TikTok we hit, we hit to it baby <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah you gotta be gotta be man i gotta I got connect with y'all on linkedin i don't think i'm connected with y'all on linkedin so i'll, I'll definitely i'll definitely link that up but yeah are y'all y'all on clubhouse yet yes sir oh y'all on clubhouse too oh man yeah I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah i'm gonna connect with y'all on clubhouse we're we, we gonna get some stuff going on clubhouse man we're gonna get that happening man. okay well what's, yeah, what's, what's what's the platform what, what's your uh what's your handle on clubhouse same what thing. Is it, I think yeah. it's okay. Honest. If not, it'll be our personal ones. I double check that with you. I'm gonna just put it on there. Our personal one's definitely on there, but I I get with you. Already, already. <laughs> so, sounds good, man. Sounds good. Well, well, fellas, I appreciate y'all bringing the walk on nation through the thing. You see, we we got special. We put up the grass for y'all, make y'all feel at home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> championship culture championship culture uh but uh, to all the ballers out there listening uh everybody make sure make sure make sure that you share this episode with, with one student athlete that needs to hear it, one student athlete one teammate one coach man because these fellas are doing some phenomenal things and i mean I've, I've seen the programs that they're rolling out and they are really killing the game right now so y'all Bring them to your campus, bring them to your team. They will help They will help your student athletes get their mindset right so that they can get that grind set right. But once again, uh, yeah, I like that too. That, that just flows. <laughs> yeah, just like y'all saying earlier, football players, hey, basketball players can flow too. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, all, all the ballers, man, be, be sure to, 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 send, to send them a DM. Let them know how, how this episode uh, benefited, impacted you. And just like I said, share it with one friend. And until next time, my friends, uh, this is Beyond the Ball. My name is Jonathan Jones, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.